No, because I met Alex at a networking office. Yeah. That was in Parkland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So Alex is going to be working with, uh, uh, are you sous chef? Head chef. Working with his head chef, Stu. They're rocking the classic chef look, sleeve, beards. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, so there's a man in my ear telling me we're going live in five minutes. Uh, have any of you watched the shows before? You know we go live on the hour. The reason for that is we're live streaming onto Facebook, onto YouTube. So if you want to go home and watch it on our social media channels, you can. Of which, talking of our social media channels, we've got about 400,000 social followers at the moment. So you can, there's lots of ways that you can grab us and interact with us. Um, if you want to get us on Instagram, we are at The Staff Canteen on Instagram. If you want to get us on Facebook, we're The Staff Canteen. We're on Snapchat. Who's on Snapchat? Don't say yes, Jenna, that joke's worn old. Who's on Snapchat? <laughs> you can get us on Snapchat. There's a filter on Snapchat. Uh, you can get us on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel where people watch one million minutes of video every single month. It's nuts. Um, you can get us on Twitter, at Canteen Tweets. Uh, there's a hashtag, t TSC Live. If you take any photos, you put them on your social media channels, hashtag us in, TSC Live. We'll try and give it a like or a share uh, if we can. Okay, so we're counting down from five minutes. So come in, take a seat, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, take a seat. You look hungry, madam, eating. Do you want to try some bolty? Come and take a seat. What are you eating, by the way? Curry. This will be better. We'll, we'll, we'll have a little curry off, all right? You tell me at the end if it's better than the one you got, all right? How's that? Okay, anybody else want a curry? This lady's got some she'll share with you. Take a seat, ladies. Don't be shy. We saw you at the other demo. Come on, take a seat. I get paid per bum on seat. Take a seat. I'll split me, I'll split me commission with you. Okay, so uh, we should be about two minutes away very shortly. The graphic will change, hopefully, on the screen. Then a man will count me down from 30 seconds. Okay. So we must be very close to being about only about a minute away now, I would have thought. I'm just waiting for a man in my ear to tell me there's a minute to go. So that's live in one minute, I'm being told, by Pat. So the dish that James is, uh, sorry, the dish that Alex is going to be doing is called Not Another Effing Balti. He wrote it, not me. Um, obviously a local lad. City's very, very famous for its curries and certainly its Balti's. How long? 10, 
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. You know the words. One. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your patience. We're live. Welcome to Staff Canteen Live. Please welcome on stage Alex Claridge. There we go. Come on, Stu. Come on up. Nice to see you, Chef. Yeah, mate, nice to see you. Thank How are you? You good? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? You're right. yep. Yeah, not too bad. Thanks, Same mate. tattooist. Yeah. <laughs> you can't work for us if you don't like <laughs> fit into a cliche, so we've got to go for that. Okay, um, what are you cooking? Uh, so we're cooking a dish called Not Another Fucking Balti. Um, I had only agreed to do this if I was allowed to swear on stage, so I, I owe great gratitude to Staff Canteen for that. Um, obviously, so both of us are from Birmingham. Sorry, um, this is actually happening. And uh, for me, like, I grew up quite near to the Balti Triangle, eating a lot of curry. And uh, at the moment in Birmingham, there's a hell of a lot of really, really shit Indian food. Like, if you take Uncle Ben's and put it on chicken wings, it doesn't make it fucking Indian food. It means you're a dickhead. So, fundamentally, this dish was, number one, can I put a swear on a taster menu? Number two, how can I piss off the most possible people? Number three, I really, really fucking love butter chicken. Like, most of our menu is fundamentally like, what do I enjoy eating whilst I'm pissed off my tits? And how can I justify that on a longer menu? So that dish, uh, yeah, basically it's butter chicken, but it's made to look a bit more pretentious than that because I can't charge butter chicken prices and have six chefs with me. So that's what we're doing today. Also, didn't tell us the guy before was doing a quail dish with coconut curry. Imagine that dish, but with a little bit less gravitas, a little bit more swearing, and me more likely to f kind of fuck the dish up on stage. That's what's going to happen now. So thanks for being here. I'm also not Danny Parker, in case anyone's wondering. So if you are here for that, you can just do one. I'm fine with it. I'm prepared. But thanks off for video anyway. Yeah. Off we go then. <laughs> yeah, off so we what go. are we doing first? Um, cool. So uh, introductions. The handsome one of the two of us. So that here is Stu Dealey, who's my head chef and carer. Um, <laughs> I have done some of these alone. Like I did this at West Brom for East End Foods. And like I tell you, if you want to stand as a white lad speaking to like 100 Indian grandmothers how to make a curry, it's a fucking tough sell. So <laughs> if anyone wants to have a go, it can only get better really than that one. Um, so Stu's going to kind of double team this because if I try and talk and do everything, you're not going to get a dish. You're just going to get a kind of a breakdown over half an hour. So um, we're going to prepare the quail first. Yep. Um, time's so flying. Time's off. It, oh, <laughs> there is. There's a, there's a bloody <laughs> clock there. <laughs> oh, it's like countdown. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, so the first thing we do is uh, we take the quail. We're going to prep that and take the Maybe head off. In your way. Just get it out of the way. Oh, we'll do, mate. Don't worry. Yeah, get that right out of the way. There isn't a script in front of me now, so see how it goes. Um, take the heads off. We then take the legs off as well, and we're going to confit those for using them in part of the dish. Uh, and then for the actual quail itself, we're going to marinate that in basically sort of a tandoori marinade. Um, a tandoori marinade, we're making that using yogurt, uh, ginger, garlic, a spice mix, and a little bit of lemon juice. And we marinate that and actually vac pack it to kind of get the flavour in. Um, and then we're going to cook the quail still on the crown. We're going to cook it sous vide, um, which gives us consistency in the kitchen. And then we're going to finish that in a pan once it's already been kind of taken in the water bath. This is where you normally talk and fill it because I'm trying to get lids open. I can't really uh, multitask. So talk us, tell us about the, uh, uh, the restaurant. How many covers? Where are you based in Birmingham? Cool, yeah, we should try and sell something, really. Exactly. Has anyone here eaten with us? No, cool. No, I wouldn't recommend it as shit. Um, <laughs> it's a 24 cover restaurant uh, down a dodgy side alleyway in the Jewelry Quarter in Birmingham. Um, proper glamorous, that. And uh, we do 24 a night, open Wednesday to Saturday for dinner, lunch on Friday, Saturday. We've always just tried to keep it quite focused. I, I'd rather we open less, we do the same number of covers, and we focus on just getting it right for them. And as I said earlier, like it wasn't. I wish it was a joke. All the food pretty much is just stuff that between me and Stu, as two kind of lads grow up in Birmingham, we enjoy eating. So we've got a dish called Big Mac that's basically designed to taste like a Big Mac. Um, we've got a dessert that's literally milk and cookies. Because who doesn't love milk and cookies, right? You know, there's something very agreeable about that. Ben and Jerry's um, made an ice cream. Ma mate, it's, that, not, it's not Ben and Jerry's, it's not that good. Cheers, <laughs> Stu. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, the main thing which we've got kind of criticised for for the restaurant is number one, I pick fights that I shouldn't do because I have a fragile ego and a need to get into trouble. Number two, I accidentally called Daily Mail, called TripAdvisor bastards to the Daily Mail, which went very well, ended up in death threats. So, top tip: if someone says what you think of TripAdvisor, don't answer that question. 
It's not going to go well for you. Um, what are your thoughts on TripAdvisor, Alex? They are a bunch of twats, and come to Revolution, I've got a bullet with their name on it. But if anyone wants to leave a review of this, by the way, don't <laughs> do it on my page. That's not going to go well. Um, no, do you know what? It's important that we get to... Um, that's mine now. That we get to kind of chat about how we feel. We should talk about restaurants. You might go to a restaurant not like everything you do. But that said, if you're going to post things that's illiterate bullshit... So what do, what do you want people it. to do then? Talk to you before they post Just it online? Just be fucking honest. Like, you know, do you like it? It's a pretty straightforward question. Like, yes or no. No, oh, that's delicious. Three hours later on the fucking internet. Like, oh, I hated everything about it. Like, you know, thank you very much. Um, you know, I just think you've got to fight your own corner because no one else is going to. Um, I'm going to do a bit of the dish now, mate. Just then I'll rant a bit more in a minute. Carry on. Um, so the marinade. <laughs> I'm going to show you this like it looks sexy. No, it doesn't. You, There's no you, way to do that. If you, leave, if you leave it down, the cameras will pick it up, all right? So don't. Where are the cameras? Everywhere. Oh. Everywhere. That's reassuring. It's like Big Brother. Um, so the quail we marinate that. We so always look at that by magic. Look. It looks fucking terrible on screen, doesn't it? <laughs> Like, trying to make a curry photogenic. Fuck me, I'm a miracle worker. Um, we've marinated the chicken. Uh, that'll be put then in a backpack bag. We'll leave that for 24 hours. And then for the legs, we confit those simply in a pan with a little bit of oil. They're going to be folded through a dal mix, so we don't actually add any extra aromats. We're not concerned about that. There's enough flavor in the dal itself. Um, that's the first part of it, which takes some time. We've already done art attack, so this is all done already. This is mostly just trying to fill half an hour for Cara. But there we go. Um, we're then going to make a butter chicken sauce, and um, there's no trickery, like, it's a delicious sauce. Um, go into that, put it straight down there, Stu. Yeah, it's just there. Sounds. So is this a typical dish that's on at the restaurant? Uh, it's one of the ones which we know people actually like, so we just leave it on the menu, mate. But um, no, it's, we try and change it up, but for me, in terms of epitomizing this kind Lovely. of bastardized modern Birmingham food, whatever it is, I think it's a pretty good dish for it. It's accessible, but it's fun, it's playful, it's tongue in cheek. You know, we're all going to die, let's be honest, none of this really matters. In 100 years' time, we should all be gone, don't uh, worry. Hopefully, not today. Um, <laughs> it's a Tuesday, isn't it? It's a bit heavy for a Tuesday. Um, it's Wednesday. Is it a Wednesday? <laughs> so we well, need to lighten it well, up. Isn't it, to be honest? Good start. Right, Stu, do you want to kind of talk them through this bit so you can do a bit of talking yep. and I can work out what day of the week it is and where my life's at? So it's the butter chicken sauce, so we're going to make and use the sauce component for it? Yep, so we're just going to make a butter chicken sauce. So the base of it is garlic and ginger. That's where the uh, main flavour comes from butter chicken sauce, apart from the tomatoes. So we're just going to start that off slowly because um, we don't want to take the garlic or the ginger too far because the, the flavour becomes quite bitter. How long have you worked at the restaurant, Stu? So Too long. Yeah. Well, so far I'm the longest serving member in the kitchen. Well, let, let's just see how the demo you know, goes before I'm you say that. I've yeah. only been there for four <laughs> days. So no, I'm going to joke. This is actually his trial shift, yeah. so if it goes well, he's got a job. <laughs> no, I've actually been at the Wilderness for 18 months. Started okay. Started as sous chef and then kind of worked my way up. Um, head chef at the moment, kind of. Also help Alex with Nocturnal. Yep. Yeah, uh, I've got another restaurant I need you to book a table at. Yeah. That one's a lot bigger. So if you're looking for something in Birmingham City Centre to spend yeah. money, don't go to Pizza Express. It's called Nocturnal Animals on Bennett's Hill. And it's basically Reflex. But has anyone been to Reflex? Come on, give me some bone here. You haven't been to my restaurant. You haven't been to Reflex. Like, nothing. Um, it's an 80s themed restaurant and bar, which in my head seemed like a really cool thing. Um, reality is it's mostly just people coming to a cocktail bar and getting pissed, but... We've got a restaurant there as well. Okay, so now the garlic and ginger softened down a little bit. We're going to add in turmeric, garam masala, and ground cumin. Uh, obviously, toast, toast the spices, get the flavour from it. Just while Stu's doing that, we're handing out some samples in the audience. This is from Essential Cuisine. It's their aromatic stock base, so you can have a little taste of that. I was about to just brick it then, because I was like, that's not my sample. I've not done any samples. Don't eat that thinking it's us. Okay, now the spices are toasted, so we'll put the tomato puree in. As you can see, it's quite a lot of tomato puree, so that makes for the, uh, the base. It's kind of a bit misleading, really. Butter chicken sauce, and then it's mostly tomato. I think the main thing we want to try and do with 
the source and the reason why we try and kind of treat it with care and attention. And just the little details is, for me, the heartbreaking thing about Indian food, because I jest about it, but I really, really bloody love it. I think it's such an exciting, dynamic cuisine. But the minute it starts to just kind of become, you know, people are pushed on price point, they're kind of trying to do volume with it, you don't have the time to put any love into it, which is why you see kind of really greasy, really split curry sauces. They cook them too far. They don't emulsify the butter. You know, it shouldn't be that. It should still be fresh. It should still be light. There should still be acidity. It's still a really, really incredible cuisine. And, you know, you know I'm not... I'm not entirely joking when I say that I'm trying to pick fights with really shit Indian street food traders, because I am a little bit. If any of you are there, it's so nice that you've come out to support. Um, but I think it's about trying to refine and remind people how good some of these kind of really non-fancy foods are. Because I honestly, like, a Big Mac is a really satisfying meal, and I know that's not popular. Like, you know, I'm not supposed to say that. I should probably be saying, like, it's a texture of root vegetable or some sort of bullshit. But, like, that's not delicious. Like, the food that we all know that brings us together that fundamentally, they're really commonplace foods. So what we want to do is try and do those in a way that reminds people of just how bloody good food can be and just the kind of all the nice memories with it. Like, you know, I remember eating McDonald's when I was 10 and I still remember that and I still think that's a banging time. <laughs> this sounds like a cry for help, doesn't it? It just sounds a bit like sort of lad from Birmingham here trying to work through his issues. But um, everything we do is just actually in tribute to these things. It's not taking the piss of the food itself. How's your sauce going, Stu? Yep, so we've just added in the butter, cream and a little bit of water just to uh, emulsify in. So we're just going to wait for this to heat a little bit. Once the butter starts to melt, we'll blend it up with a stick blender um, and then emulsify, obviously, the cream and the butter into it. And then we'll just season it up to taste and that's the butter chicken sauce ready. Awesome. So, obviously, we'll let that cook out. And don't worry, we've already made a sauce earlier, so even if it does go badly, we can switch it. Um, the next part of the dish which we're going to do for you is the samosa. So one of the kind of tenements that we wanted to do with this dish was to use every element of the quail and to kind of stick with, I suppose, the more traditional approach to ingredient. Um, so with the leg, once we've confit it, we pickle the meat down, and we then make a lentil dal. Um, even I'm not suicidal enough to try and do a lentil dal in like 10 minutes. Okay. So we have already made that, but once it's been made, I'm going to push it forward slightly. Uh, I don't understand these cameras, mate. Well, I need to use it, though. I need the camera to look at it, and then it come back to me. Okay, cool. So... Um, we then mix it through a really, really traditional dal, um, which is, I think, a great kind of carrier of aromats and flavor, um, and it gives a bit of texture. And we're then going to use that to, um, to make a samosa. And we make the samosa a little bit differently because, again, I want it to be light. I don't want it to be a heavy samosa. I don't want it to be kind of a thick dough. So what we're using for that is actually fouille de brick. And we use a little bit of an egg wash um, just to kind of hold the whole thing together. And uh, this is the samosa that I then tried to show, like, 100 um, Asian grandmothers how to make. And uh, I'm pretty sure that a lynching wasn't too far off. But there we go. So uh, all we do with that is we take our kind of leg meat, mix it through the dal, and we chill it down just so it's kind of firm. And then for the phyllo itself, we just brush it. Yeah, no problem. We've got 10 minutes, guys. Don't worry, we're getting through this. Less of you have walked out of this one than the ones I've done before, so it's going quite well. Um, we literally just take kind of a small amount of the mix and then and this is probably one of the most satisfying jobs I think in the kitchen for us you then kind of fold it over and just match the la angles so match its triangles push it down keep it full tuck it back fold it back over and then we do the same thing again I mean genuinely some of our chefs hate this because I have to make 150 of these and it's a lot less fun when it's for 150 Fold it over. And what I love about this way of making it is there's just a refinement to it that you don't get that you don't get through um I'm grab a knife. That you don't get through doing a traditional samosa dough. It keeps it all kind of really tight, really refined. No, and that's what you end up with. You end up with like a perfect little triangle samosa, and that works pretty much for anything, and it just means that it's crispy, it's light. I don't really want the pastry to be a big element of it. I want it to be about the filling. I'm just looking for something that's going to provide texture and kind of contain it together. Um, and that then means that we've used the entire quail for it. We've used the leg, we've used the breast. Um, and then the final other elements of kind of traditional Indian meal. Um, cucumber, cucumber raita. I can't even speak. Cucumber raita. So we want to try and find a kind of an elevator way to do that, which was still light, but provided that flavor, that little nod to kind of tradition. So for that, we actually make a cucumber air. So we're going to blend cucumber juice, 
We then dose that with soy lecithin and then using an immersion no, no, no. blender. Yogurt. I can hear myself. Is that, is that, never mind, don't worry. Distracting there. Um, and then you kind of end up with a really, really light foam of cucumber, um, which we use for that. We've got a date and tamarind puree, which just brings sweetness to hold the balance, because I think it's so important to balance spice. We want it to be everything. We want it to kind of be, you know, to be sweet, to be savory, to be spicy. We wanted all those things. Um, and then we finish it with puffed wild rice, because, you know, what curry would be there without rice? So it's just going to blend the cucumber juice. Um, and then, super simple, a la minute to order. We put an immersion blender in, and we kind of foam that, use that to dress the whole dish. Um, for the puffed wild rice, uh, got some oil on the pan, and all we're going to do is then fry that, puff it up, and then season it with curry and salt. So when you're eating, oh wait, go go go, curry. No no, it's okay. Um, so when you eat it, what we want is that playful nod. We want people to see these are all the elements that you expect to see in a curry, but it's not really a curry. It's you know in composition, in form, it, it's very much kind of you know a modern take on that. Right. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute whilst I find a strainer down below. Tell us what you're doing, Stu. So we're just blending up the cucumbers for cucumber juice. We're then going to add to the cucumber juice some sugar, salt, and some lecithin. Yeah. Uh, which we'll obviously use as a foam. So it's our bit of a take on a raita. So mostly because it's obviously full of flavour. We don't put anything on the plate that isn't flavoursome. Um, but also it looks quite cool on the dish. So I've just blended this up into a pulp. Um, and then the pan's on there for it. It's it, the, the pan's also got cold oil in it, so you may need to use some imagination in a minute. Okay, so just while, uh, while the guys are doing that, we've got some... Uh, We've got some coriander and some cardamom leaves coming around into the audience from Westlands. If you want to have a little try of those, are you using um, coriander in this? Yeah, so we've got living coriander crest from Westlands on this dish. Um, which again, we just use, I don't want it to be too coriander heavy, but because they're so fresh, because they're still growing, they've got a real kind of clarity of flavour, and that's one of the things that we want to try and do. Like all, all our food at the wilderness has kind of two key tenements. I want it to be kind of flavour intensity. So. It shouldn't be gentle. I'm not looking for food that kind of gently caresses your face. If we say it's a flavor, I want it to punch you in the face and the flavor clarity. So if we say there's an ingredient there, I just want it to taste of the yeah. ingredient that's meant to be the there. Main, I think the main pretty straightforward. Yep. The main motto that we always follow is just food that's fucking delicious. Basically, mm. it's, it's yeah, about no cooking food that you want to eat. You know, you can make it look all kind of pretty, and but if it doesn't taste good, what's the point? So what we've done here is just blend the cucumber into a pulp and then strain the juice. And like I said, we'll, ra we'll add the salt, sugar, and lecithin. And then hand blend that into a foam. That's it. We, uh, we will send some foam around for you to try as well. So I hope no one's eaten yet because you're going to be full on that. Um, so the wild rice, best laid plans of my cement. I'm a... Not going to try and fry that because the oil's cold and the fries and the temperature of the samosas. So, uh, unfortunately, James, who uh, James, give a wave. So, James is uh, from UCB was helping us with the oil, so I'm going to kill him after the demonstration. Um, if you have a wave and enjoy him whilst he's still alive, that'd be great. Do you want the oil turned on? Uh, I think that ship sailed, to be honest, mate. Has it? Yeah. <laughs> have you not got cool. enough time? Uh, to get it to temperature, mate. Like, it's some rice, basically. Put it in the oil, it puffs. You know, use your imagination. Um, it'll go. It'll be all right. We'll get it. So, whilst <laughs> whilst um, whilst she's finishing off the foam, once the quail's been cooked, here's when we cooked earlier. All we're then going to do with that is take the breasts off the actual carcass, so we can cook those in a pan. Yes. Yeah. And that way, it just means that we've already got control over over the cook on it. Uh, did you tell us how long that was cooked for in the water bath? So I can't it's remember. It's been cooked to 58 for 25 minutes. Okay. Then we ice bath it. So still nice and pink. So it's still nice and pink. Um, and it means then we know that when we cook that, we're going to get a kind of consistent finish on it, which for service means that on a taste menu, we're trying to get food for you probably every four to five minutes. 
I want it to be a quick succession of flavors. Um, so this way it means that we know the consistency is there. All the quail is going to come out the same for us, and every dish should, should taste the same for you. Um, so wash my hands, because I've got that mad head on me, which just I think is a great look. Just there. Yep. Yep. No problem. Yeah, so what we've got on the go at the moment, so the butter chicken sauce is ready to be emulsified with the stick blender. So we'll just emulsify that, taste it, um, and then add any additional salt that it needs. Um, and we've also got the less fin added into, added into the cucumber juice. So this is our foam that we've got here. Stu, I need to be really rude and interrupt you. When you fry that samosa, yeah. just for the audience, we fried, we've, uh, there was peanuts in that oil before. Okay, so if anyone tries the dish and you have a nut allergy, don't try the dish. Yeah. We've also hidden a peanut in just one of the samosas. <laughs> so if you find the peanut, you win a prize. No, but okay, there, there were peanuts fried in the oil, so we are cooking the samosa in the oil that the peanuts were cooked in. So if you have a nut allergy, I keep saying this, don't sue me, because I did tell you. Okay? Sue Staff Canteen, not me. <laughs> Sukara. Yeah, I can get on board with that, mate. Sukara. So we just emulsify. You turned my oil off. I, I told you that the oil's gone. It's dead to me, mate. Don't worry, it's not coming back. That was my mission. Was, was, was that your one mise on job? It was, yeah. You had one job and it's gone down. One honestly. job. You've not got this trial shift, mate. Like, <laughs> what you think's going on is a cookery <laughs> demo. I'm just trying to get a brigade for my second restaurant together. Like, don't worry. Anyone else want to have a bash at this? Like. What are you doing there, Stu? So we're just emulsifying in the cream and butter, which is already emulsified in itself, but just to make sure. Obviously, as Alex talked about, that kind of trademark kind of Indian curry sauce where you've got oil losing everywhere. That just stops that, basically. So other than the wilderness, when you go out for a curry, where do you go? Uh, do you know what? Yeah, let, 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 let's do a plug for Akatar, because yeah. he can't be here today. He would plug himself, but um, Ofim's banging in Birmingham, if you've not been already. Uh, where, sorry? Ofim. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, genuinely. Uh, with like, Akatar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, his jokes aren't as funny as mine, but he does <laughs> cook quite well, so it's definitely a good restaurant. Um, and otherwise, yeah, to be honest, old school. Like, but my issue is sort of the way that Indian food's been heavily commercialized and turned into chains. Because for a food that for me is generous and giving and delicious and fresh and humble, like to watch it churned out en masse by a kind of a chain, it's just not really my thing. I mean, like, you know, different options are available. Uh, if you like it, that's fine. I'm not going to judge you for it massively. But I think, you know, it's so important, particularly for Birmingham, given that, let's be honest, in the press, the only things I care about is how many stars have we got? And we invented the Balti. Like, we are so much more than that as a city. Like, it's an absolutely joke that that's the only thing we talk about as a city. And all the London yeah, press, that's all that they one. care about. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know how many of you are from Birmingham. All of you seem to be relatively well adjusted, so I'm guessing you've come from further afield. But I think as a city, we don't start kind of punching back and saying, no, we have more to us than that. We have more pride in what we do. I think we're kind of not going to go any further forward and cement our rightful reputation as the, you know, the second culinary city. Manchester can do one. Um, how many stars they got? <laughs> Keep trying. <laughs> cool. So we're not too far off. Don't worry. It's almost over. Um, I can see all the staff canteen guys on social media just thinking, we can't post any of this. We can't post any of this. Like, I've not sworn for a few minutes, so that's fucking good news, isn't it? Um, right, what are you saying, Stu? We almost there? Yep. All good. Just need cool. to fry the samosa. All right, cheers, lad. Do you want to do the quail? Yeah, sound. So, we're going to bring the dish together for you, then we'll send some samples out, and then uh, we'll go about our lives. Hopefully one or two of you will come to the restaurant, but otherwise you'll go about your lives and we'll all be fundamentally fine. Oh uh, yeah, that can be. Um, Thank you. You've got any salt down there, Stu? Yeah, it's just this. Thank you. Cool. So for the samosa, we're just frying that at 180, um, just as it's golden crispy. Um, it's only small, so it won't take too long. Then for the quail, we're going to put that into a hot pan, press side down, crisp up the skin, turn over and finish it. Um, and then that's literally it. We'll plate the dish. We'll have a go. So I'm just going to season, season the skin side, and then place them both into the pan, skin side down. And most of the cooking we do on the skin because that's where I want the colour. That's where I want the kind of the texture. We're fine. 
Oh, our clock started working again. Look. Your clock's malevolent, mate. It's a snide. You need to not trust that clock. It's letting us down. It's the Mad Hatter. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know. She's just plating up now. So we've got... So what was that? Sorry. So we've got a date and tamarind puree. So we just um, soak some dates in an aromatic kind of liquor that's got cardamom pods, uh, lime leaves, curry leaves, and then just blend it up with some tamarind paste. Could you take those back there for me, please, and uh, bring back a clean board, and then if you bring through the tray of samosas. Oh, they're there. That's fine. They're here. Found. So... The, the, the sweetness there, that was the final element on this dish that kind of made it work for us. Um, when I first did this, I did this at like a, a kind of a one-off event and um, it didn't have the sweetness, but we found that to make it fit within a taste menu, because not a whole, men a whole menu isn't Indian, a whole menu is a mix of things. It's about making sure that although the flavors might be different, all those dishes sit in balance. They have the same kind of balance of flavors and ingredients. So when you get through the 16 course taster menu, um, it makes sense as a whole. Your case, you're okay, Stu. Yeah, you've got a cucumber powder there. Yeah, yeah. There you go, mate. Cheers. Cool. About a minute off, mate. Oh. Um, so the whole dish for me should balance, because that's what I dislike about kind of when you go out to eat food that's that's not got love in it, that it's not got balance. Salt. Stay over there, mate. Just a bit of salt. Just so we've taken the samosa out of the fryer. A little bit of seasoning just to take out the excess oil. They're just down there, mate. Yeah. Got spoons. I've got one spoon, mate. That's all they could afford. Budget cuts and we that. We got a pot of spoons, Ian. Yeah, there oh, there we go. There we go. Take a posh one. All right. Got to leave it there. I'll do a yeah, tray for You're not allowed to touch the yeah. plate. Yeah. Done. Thank you. Thank you very much, mate. Awesome. Thank you very much. So we got our quails cooking, got our samosa cooked. Yep. We got our puree ready. Yep, we're all good to go. What's next? So Plate it and then leave, yeah. mate. That's um yeah. that's the general plan. Cool. I yeah. need you to finish on time because at the moment me and Cara are one all on chefs running late. Yeah, she said to stitch you up, mate, so don't worry <laughs> about it. Like, there's a fiver in this for me if I go over. So we're just gonna put the quail breasts on the plate. So we just put everything onto draining trays just to stop any uh, kind of spillages or anything on the plate. So we've got the samosa, we'll just pop that up against the, against the quail breast. And then we've got the... Sorry. Yep. So butter chicken sauce, so butter chicken as you would expect it. And then what's quite good about this dish is it's got a lot of different flavours and textures. So it, it, you never really get the same mouthful. So this is crispy wild rice that we talked about earlier that kind of sadly failed. But so that's just been puffed up in a hot oil. And then we've put curry powder and a little bit of salt. You need that pan still? No, no, we're, mate. no we're all good. And so, Stu, remind us, did you say this was a, w uh, what portion size is this normally in the restaurant? So, we serve around 12 courses at the moment. So, obviously, this isn't... Oh, so this is on a taster menu? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we only okay. offer a tasting menu. Okay. Um, so, like I say, we offer 12 courses plus snacks. Um, so, sure. it's kind of, you know, we don't want to fill people up by uh, giving them, you know, really big courses. We want to showcase as many flavours whatever as we can through the dishes. So we're just gonna cut a few of the Westland uh, coriander crests. Pick the best ones. Alex is cooking samosas for you guys. Just for you guys. Not so much you guys. None of you are from West Brom, are you? Oh God, no one is from like, West Brom, are you? 
No one in this audience talks, which makes me very suspicious. No, they will in a minute. They will in a minute. Once you give them food, seriously, you have to bribe them with food. Okay, so that's the finished dish. So this is... Give us a dish title, Stu. Off you go. So it's not another fucking bolty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, massive round of applause for Alex and Stu. Now, I'm going to come down into the audience. Who's got a question for one of these gentlemen? Stick your hand in the air. Keep it PG. Yes, sir. Well, give me two secs. Hang on, hang on. You need a microphone. <laughs> so if you can introduce yourself and then ask Alex or Stu the question. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know, all I want to know is if you've got any jobs got going. Sauce. Uh, we don't at the moment, mate, but don't worry. Give me a couple of weeks, I'll piss some other people off, and I will need chefs, so. Sorry, that's me being close to this. Thank, thank you for that. Any other questions? So, yeah, yes, madam. If you could, oh, sorry, I do apologise. Sorry, if you could introduce yourself to, to these gentlemen, and, and then. Hi, I'm Irene. Hello, nice to meet you. Um, why do you both have to swear so much? Oh, <laughs> for the Bad life choices, really. You don't need to. You're good yeah. at what you do without well, doing that. Other options are available. Yeah. Um, Sound better when you don't swear. Well, each their own, but <laughs> thanks for watching. Any other questions? Yes, sir. So, again, if you can ask, if you can introduce yourself, then ask Alec the question. Okay. I'm Sparky, a chef from uh, Cheltenham. And I want to know what the other, you said it's not just Indian. What is your other cuisine within your restaurant or restaurants? So it, most of the food will always start with kind of European produce yep. and kind of European cooking techniques. Um, but we'll then kind of tend to add spice to it in some variety. But that's fairly kind of a collecting mix of spice. So some of that is, uh, is Indian. Some of it's kind of Japanese elements of kind of Thai. What I quite enjoy is the challenge of creating food where the spice is there is seasoning. I enjoy that. But it's still very much it's like a European dish. So you know we've done scallop with kind of chorizo oil, but we'll then dress it with a Thai green dressing. Yeah, no. um, you know we'll do dishes where it's almost a traditional dish, adding those spice elements. And I think for me, it's just a product of like growing up and cooking in Birmingham. Like it is a pretty eclectic place to live and eat. There's a lot going on in terms of flavour. So that kind of dish <coughs> that Stu said is um, on the tasting menu, that would be a nice starter, right? So well yeah, that, that, that's it. It's probably about midway through the tasting menu. Yeah. yeah. So the dishes kind of, we tend to try and balance them so they won't all have the same spice. They will all have the kind of same influence, but I want it to be kind of a journey for you. So it starts with clean flavours. We add spice, we add smoke, we kind of pull back. It's balanced throughout. Okay, time for one more question and then we're going to get some samosas into the audience for you. Anyone else got a question? Speak now, forever hold your peace. Hands in the air. Who wants a samosa? It's going well. Just None of you want a samosa. You, you got uh, okay. No more questions. Cool. Sure. Right. We'll send some samosas out. But thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate okay, it. Okay, ladies Enjoy and gentlemen. Day. Please, one more time, put your hands together. Sorry, Alex Claridge and Stu from the Wilderness. Yeah, okay. So we are. Once Alex That's cooked good. those, we're going to whisk him away over here to do some media stuff. Uh, we're going to get some samosas into the audience for you. Do you need photos of those ladies before someone grabs them? Um, we can look after those for you. If you go and talk to Kara.